When I was viewing this house over seven years ago, the wall was not an issue. It was leaning already, the South East London's Tower of Pisa. Like most people, I had maybe 30 minutes to decide about the biggest purchase of my existence. There were times in my life when I would spend more time deciding on what type of trainers to get or what sort of takeaway to order. But this is England, where you could be a villain or a victim, and property is a nationwide obsession. Who cared about leaning walls? The sellers wanted 300k. The bank made them go down to 297k. This is how much repairing of the wall was supposed to cost. I didn't know about walls at that time. I also didn't know about the anchoring bias. A cognitive bias, well known in pricing, negotiation and other contexts. It describes the tendency to rely heavily on the first piece of information offered in an interaction. This initial information, or anchor, establishes a frame of reference and decision makers base their decisions around that anchor. 300, then free. Like most of us, amateurs and experts alike, the surveyor wasn't immune to anchoring either. That wall was to hold my dream extension. The extension that never was. Planning an extension is a great process. You hire an architect, a surveyor, builders and maybe even a project manager. And then, years after they've all gone, you discover things nobody seemed to care to share with you or even dig out. Like the fact that your land plans are different to your neighbor's land plans, for example. To repeat after Tori Amos, can't stop what's coming, can't stop what is on its way. The changing of deeds after a breakup took a while. Gravity and rain, both generous yet inconsiderate, made the wall lean further. I was saving up for its healing, hoping to never witness its premature collapse. By that time, I was fully aware that the wall is a boundary wall and a party wall in one. Which means, according to some very serious home ownership papers, that I need to pay for its repair and maintenance. While at the same time ask neighbors for their permission to carry out any of those repairs and maintenance. They can agree to all my loony or sensible visions and give me a green light or tell me to hire a surveyor to make sure I don't damage their property. Or, and this is where the plot thickens, tell me that I need to hire two separate surveyors, one for them, one for me. Eeny, mini, miny, mo. If your neighbor's footing the bill, which option would you go for? It's a long wall, badly made by whoever chunked up this piece of land. It needed reinforced concrete, a lot of it, and some more. My savings would cover its most desperate parts. It kind of made sense to also tidy up the garden. The pandemic started. The neighbors' letters threatening with cancel continued. I was waiting for the builders, then a surveyor, then builders once more. But things were moving forward. And then it was done. It didn't cost 3k. And then, remind me why we live in London. I sometimes think, imagine what you could get for that money. New windows, underfloor heating, a new kitchen perhaps? Oh well, it's like imagining the current value of that Bitcoin you sold back in 2008. So instead of regretting, instead of recalculating, I embrace that expense. See it as my legacy. The Great Wall of South East London. Appreciate it. Admire its stability when it rains, enjoy the silence coming from my neighbors on the other side of it, and sometimes even share a hug with it and a cup of tea. 
After all, it will outlive me. So we might as well become friends.